I'll race you. <laughs> Let's go. All right, so today we are on the Rev1 72 volt custom build. This is like a $54, $5,500 build that's including the bike as well. So that came with a 72 volt, 34 amp hour battery in there, 300 amp BMS uh, as well on the battery and a 5,000 watt motor. So we're pushing roughly about, I think it's like 9,000 watts of power out of this bad boy. We kept the stock electrical system. So we got the stock 52 volt battery. That's why we have two displays up here. I modified a bunch of this stuff since the last time I did a video on it. So let's get on the way and let's talk about it. Yeah, this guy's going pretty fast when it's a stoplight up here. If you guys notice some changes from the last video, if you guys are the true MVPs and you watch this video all the time, I modified the bracket. So check this out. We now have the turn signals over here, the horn, the headlight, high and low beam on this side. I also have the controller set up for the stock uh, display right here on this side as well. Before, what this was, it had a half throttle on here. So it had like a little throttle that went out to here. I cut that off. I used my Dremel and a little plastic cutting blade and I just cut the throttle off completely. Now there was a little tiny bit of metal in there as well because there's a little sensor for, uh, you know, detecting when you're actually using the, the stock throttle. So uh, I had to cut that off as well, but no issues with it at all. Everything works. We'll test it out at night as well. And I'll show you that everything works even though I did cut it off. Um, the bad thing about doing that is if you do want to go back to the stock system with the stock motor and everything like that, just in case you have an issue or maybe you're selling the bike and you want to use this motor or whatever for another build, um, you're gonna have to contact the company and tell them you need like a new, uh, you know, a new unit and all this kind of stuff. So if you don't want to modify it, then you can just do what I did in the last video and just put this on this side and just flip it upside down. The only bad thing about that is your left signal is your right signal and your right signal is your left signal. And then the uh, high beam and low beam is upside down. But it wasn't too big of a deal, but this looks fantastic now. I'm, I'm loving it. I'm absolutely loving it. I also put the main controls on the left side for the 72 volt so I could turn it on and off. I like it on this side because now I can do the plus and minus button, even though I don't really mess with it too much. I feel like this would have actually been better on this side so then I can play with the turn signals with this hand because with this hand with having the throttle like this unless you could do a you could do a full throttle if you want I'm not a big fan of full throttles uh, it just hurts my hand over time and they're a little bit more sketchier you know like when you take off and whatnot so um, there's a little bit of a distance between the throttle the brakes in the middle and then you have your uh, turn signals so uh, you guys can do it however you want but this is kind of how I made my setup is now, and I'm happy. I'm absolutely loving it. I also put uh, red pedals on this bike as well. Um, they were from the Rave e-bike that I reviewed. Um, I ended up selling that bike. We got rid of it. Guy just working on his car right in the middle of nowhere. All right. <laughs> I don't know if you can actually do that without having a garage. So I took those off before I sold the bike because the guy offered me a lower price than what I was selling it for. So I was like, yeah, like I'll give it to you for this price. You know, I'm just gonna take the pedals off. All right, this is where a bike comes in handy. Excuse me, excuse me. Perfect, that worked out perfect. And we're gonna do the same thing here if this Camry gets over, but no. They were like way off to the side. So far, so good, man. It's working out perfect. Hell yeah, I got through that in no time whatsoever. Now, if I was on something like the Max Fox, which is obviously a good bike, like you couldn't even do this on the Max Fox either. You want to be very careful. Um, I love the Max Fox. Um, I'm actually selling that bike. Oh no. All right, so some other stuff I was going to talk about in a little bit after we kind of rambled on about some stuff is, uh, <laughs> I put a bigger rotor up front. It's a 203. It's from a company called Magura. And I had a difficult time. I didn't want to record it because it's very hot now and I just wanted to get it done in my garage. I don't got AC out there. So I was just hurrying up trying to get it done, right? It took me like an hour and a half just to put a front rotor on this bike because every single time I would tighten down the 203 rotor on here, it would warp. I don't know what was going on with it. I was like crisscross pattern, like going in the star pattern and everything like that. And I was making sure they were like turned down evenly all the way across. Even when I put them very lightly and I looked at it, it was warped. 
it would just it would literally be like swinging back and forth i was like what's going on so i took it off many times and i set it on the like the sidewalk or my garage and i'm looking at it it was completely flat and when i would set it there and put one bolt on it very loosely it was completely like firm like and planted when i put it in the bike i'm like what is going on there's something wrong there's absolutely something wrong so i thought it was because if you look at these magnesium wheels or whatever they're called there's a like a little bracket behind it it's like a six bolt bracket and it has a little bit of extra metal on the back so i was thinking when i tightened down the rotor it couldn't fit on one side it would fit it would pop on on one side but it would be raised up on the other side and i was like that sounds just about right that's what's happening so i decided let me grind down the rotor a little bit in the back so it would sit flush that didn't work so then i got spacers which i got like these uh six bolt spacers that you're used for like brakes and that didn't work so then i got washers on top of the spacer that didn't work at all i could not figure it out it kept work warping every time i tightened it down so i finally just decided you know what let me flip it the opposite way so now the actual rotor is backwards so the direction of it saying it's supposed to go straight kind of like your tires have a directional aerial arrow going straight god it's windy as hell and i'm focusing on the road I'm trying to talk at the same time um it's backwards so i don't know how well that's gonna work i will say that these brakes are badass compared to how they were stock. Now I really needed brake upgrades. So I did that in the front. We also put red pads in the front, which they stop phenomenally now. Like really good, way better than before. Like the whole bike just like dips. If you guys can see that, wee, wee. <laughs> and um, I like it. Oh, so now I use my turn signal. That works. Hey, yes, yes. Um, the reason why I started talking about the rotor, maybe you guys can hear that noise right now, but it's very, very close to the, the brake bracket. I had to get an adapter. I think it's hitting the adapter. Um, you could try to slide it over as much as possible so the rotor doesn't hit the adapter. It's those little rings. They look like rivets, and that's what holds like the, the rotor together. It's like five of them. Well, one of them was hitting, so I got my Dremel, and I barely grinded it down because it was barely ever so like nicking it, right? And it looks like the noise is coming back because I was not about to, you know, cut that as much as possible. I was trying to do little by little until it stopped rubbing, but it looks like it kind of came back a little bit. The brake bracket that I got, the adapter, um, I'll put links out in the description because I ordered the wrong one in the beginning. Uh, but now I got the right one and now it, it fits good, but there are some complications. Another thing you got to do too is you also need, oh man, can we go this way? Another thing you need is you need a washer in between the wheel now on this side. So normally you put the washers on the outside and then you put the nuts on the outside. Well, now you need it on one on the inside and then one on the outside. So you got to find a washer if you have one like at your house or whatever. So something to keep in mind as well. Um, I didn't really go down there and look. You guys probably won't be able to see it either. I don't know. No. Yeah, the GoPro is going to be pretty wide, but there's a washer in there between the black spacers that go in, in between the wheel. But uh, I'm liking it so far, especially with the upgraded brake pads in the back as well. It's, it's performing great. Now, it's not perfect. It does feel just like my Super 73. It actually might feel a little tiny bit better than my Super 73 now. Uh, I'm still kind of getting used to it. This is kind of like my first actual ride other than going up and down my block because I was trying to bleed these things in like hella good, like really, really good. I was slamming on them so much that they got hot as hell. They were smoking in the front. But it also could be because it's backwards. I don't know. But as long as you're not like too, too bad with it. Yeah. All right, I'm going this way. They can't tell me what I can and can't do. Yeah, yeah. We got skateboard people up here. We got bikes on the other side and they're finally getting this road done. So I'm excited. Man, that guy's just gonna step on it. It's brand new, bro. Like you're gonna put like feet prints in it. Dang. Like, I'm not even going to do that. <laughs> I don't know, man. Some people just don't care when I have nice things, man. Because I really want these roads to be nice here. Seriously, like, I hate driving a car and having, like, bumpy-ass roads. My alignment gets messed up. Or my, uh, I don't know, my wheels could get bent because I have aftermarket wheels. I got rubber band tires on there and whatnot, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I just want nice roads up in here in Fresno. And we got some crappy roads. But we will be taking our sur on on this one of these days when it's, like, fully like finish and everything like that all right now i'm gonna haul ass oh and a uh, real quick update is uh our display turned off 
Man, these brakes work so good. I wanted to show you them, but I'm afraid of locking them up. <laughs> Trust me, I'll put links down in the description so you guys can order these same brake pads. The brake pads are actually what made the biggest difference. Um, so I'm going to turn that back on. It's a little hard because it's like in this little corner. But uh, there we go. It's on. Like I said, if it was on this side, maybe behind this, it would have been a little bit easier. But, I mean, it is what it is. And then um, some other stuff. I told you I got the red pedals on there. And that's just because I want people to know I'm a bike when I'm in the bike lane. Especially when I'm going a little faster so people aren't, like, honking at me. What's up, man? <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, I just modified this one. Yeah. I'll race you. <laughs> That was one of my buddies. He uh, follows me on uh, Facebook. I told him I'll race him in his van. He's catching up, though. He's catching up. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> 55 miles an hour, 54 roughly, somewhere around there. <laughs> Too funny. Oh, that was a big old piece of cement. See ya, man. That was fun. <laughs> oh, man. You guys hear that noise now? It's all right. Oh, where are those cops coming from? Oh, okay, it's ambulance. I was like, time to dip. <laughs> time to dip out. <laughs> um, some other stuff I was going to talk about real quick before all this happened is... We still need to figure out the brake situation, um, not the brake situation, the chain situation in the back. So I still don't have a chain on this bike. And that's just because it was either too short or too long. Every time I took a link out, it was just either or. And if it's too tight, it's gonna like mess something up. So uh, I gotta figure something out. We just haven't figured it out completely yet. Um, but I also haven't taken the back wheel off it, you know, at all yet because I've just taken it off so many times, I got tired of it. I also ordered more spacers for the rear because the brake in the back the rotor is a little too far off from the center so what i need to do is get like two spacers and then i could push it out a little bit more so then the brake rotor in the back will sit directly right in the middle of the actual uh brake pads because the way they are on the 72 volt it doesn't sit perfectly in the middle so it's resting against one brake pad it's not that big a deal it still works don't get me wrong but i feel like we get more range too as long as it's uh, not rubbing the whole entire time we're riding Plus we'll get like better like stopping power as well. So I'm planning on doing that all in the same time. I don't want to take it apart and then just do little stuff at a, at a time. I'd rather just do it all in one go and just be done with it. So hopefully we can figure out the situation in the back. I'm really worried. I got a free wheel remover and it doesn't fit because it's not big enough for the axles that I have on this bike. They're like 14 millimeter axles. So that goes out the window. So that free wheel I put on there I think it's stuck on there and there's a way I can try to get it all because I need to go back to a 16 or an 18 tooth uh, free wheel and then try a new chain again. I don't know. We got some stuff to do or I'm going to have to like stretch out the chain myself with like something like link by link just to get that extra bit of clearance that I need so it's not super tight but enough that it hugs on there and fits. But uh, anyways, we are at work and I'll see you guys at nighttime. I just saw that my buddy's here, so he should have his uh, Ride One Up Rev One e-bike chill in the back. So we'll have two of them. And then he can kind of get a good look of mine. Oh, did he bring it? Oh, he didn't bring it, unfortunately. Unless he's putting it somewhere else. Dang, I was really hoping to have like two of these bikes sitting next to each other. One stock and one aftermarket. I really wanted to show him the difference of what I've done to mine compared to his. All right, see you guys at nighttime. Let me move all this stuff, get it locked up so no one steals it. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're chilling. It feels really good out here right now to not even have a sweater because uh, I was debating if I was gonna bring a sweater or not to work, but it was so hot coming to work and this feels great. Maybe I'll change my mind in about like 10 minutes. <laughs> we'll see. Oh, wait, can't get anywhere without the, the bike being on, hold on. I'm jumping the gun here. Oh, this is gonna be uh, blown out for you guys too. So let me um, let me fix this really quick. There we go. We should be Gucci. Should be good to go. I still need to adjust this mirror. Ever since I did the the mods and kind of had to take the grips off and all that kind of stuff, I had to move a lot of stuff. And now I'm I'm getting used to where my mirror's at. 
I was asking my buddy about um, how come he didn't bring his bike, and I guess he said he finally has his uh, the car to drive for a little bit. It's not gonna be forever. I was like, oh man, it would have been perfect, man, if you would have brought it. It'd have been perfect. All right, you know who's gonna go across, which is probably not the best thing because everyone does 60. Oh, okay, we're good. It's already yellow. It's good. Yep, yep, we good, we good. Cool, let's jam out of here. Yeah, yeah, let's go. A little more sketch here. Not having anything covering my arms, especially at nighttime, not being able to see too much. Uh, one great thing about this setup is that you'll never have to charge the stock battery. I was thinking about that when I was at work. I'm like, you don't have to charge the stock battery because all it is is running off the lights. This thing has been fully charged five bars for like the longest period of time. It is never gonna drain at all. What I really need to do is now get some like crazy custom lights to put on this bike and run it all off the 52 volt battery. This thing is gonna take forever to charge. I don't think that I'll ever have to charge the 52 volt battery. Cause obviously I don't ride this bike every day. I have other bikes I take as well. So I would have to put like 100, 200 miles on this thing to start seeing like <laughs> The bar's going down. I don't know. I just feel like it's, it would be a lot. Oh, that noise came back. It's worse. Man. <laughs> My buddy was just talking about that as well, too. He was like, have you had issues with your rotor? He said he was trying to hammer his in. And I'm like, yeah, honestly, if you, if you guys really think about it, I've rode so many e-bikes. Every time you get on a bike, there's always a slight rotor issue. Like, all the time. Like, you really just can't get rid of it. Um, it just happens. I, I don't get it. Like my Onyx RCR, I went through, it's had two different rotors and it's also had, actually no, three different rotors from the, what the guy told me. It's on the third one. And I also replaced the whole brake system, like the caliber and everything. And it's still, while you're riding it, click, 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 click. You, you just hear it like brushing against the, the, the brake pads. It's just so annoying, but that's just how it is. You got to get used to it. It's just literally how it is. But anyways, Let's get on to what's going on with the channel, YouTube, new bikes coming, some stuff that you guys probably like to know before stuff hits the channel. Well, I, I don't like to say some of this stuff because sometimes by the time this video get, goes out, like it could even be tonight or tomorrow morning, but uh, I have a company right now. Um, I made a video review on their bike. First off, let me say this. The first bike that came, it was a uh, DOA, dead on arrival. And I contacted them and they were pretty cool. They said, yeah, we'll ship you out another bike. I said, okay, no problem. They wanted me to ship that bike back, but I had already broken down the box because I've been trying to clean up my boxes. So as soon as I was done with the bike, like putting it together, I broke the box down so I couldn't ship it back. Um, they sent me a second bike, not a problem, right? I got the second one. As soon as I got it in, I started doing my video review, like right off the bat. I was like, I need to get my video review done because they're like, hey, we need it done by this day and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, that's fine. Like. So I got it done, right? And then I was like, all right, well, it's done. So I'm going to schedule it to go on YouTube probably in a couple days. So let me know when you can pay my fee because they didn't want to pay it up front. I told them I wanted it up front before I even did the video review. But they were like, okay, we'll pay like after you do your video and uh, we'll go off your schedule. And I said, okay, perfect. I still haven't received the money. I did the video review three days ago and still nothing. This company has been like replying to me like almost every hour or two. And now they ghosted me for the last three days after I said, hey, I want my money for the video. So if they don't pay me, I'm gonna have to put them on blast. <laughs> I'm sorry. And if they don't pay me, here's the thing. I'm probably gonna put the video up on YouTube anyway. Realistically, just because I made the video, I spent the time on it. I have like a schedule of like stuff going out. And if I don't put that video out, then I'm gonna be short a video for that week and I'm gonna be scrambling to try to put something together for you guys and I just don't have the time. So I'm probably gonna put the video out anyway. And since I have two other bikes, I figured out what was wrong with the other one that came dead on arrival. Um, the connection from the battery, I had to take the whole like battery assembly apart and I found a connection in there that was disconnected. So during shipment, something must have came loose and that's what it was. So now both bikes are working. One's brand new in the box. And the other one I just did a video review on, I did like 20 miles. I'm not even gonna do the video going to work. That's actually the bike I was gonna take going to work today. And if hey, if they don't pay me my money, then I'm not doing the second video and I'm gonna keep both bikes so I can sell them. And I even told the company, I said, hey, look, like um, I can't, they sent me a shipping label and I put it on the box 
but for some reason since i didn't create the shipping label by fedex it will not allow me to schedule a pickup i can only schedule a pickup if i made the shipping label so i told them hey is there a way you can contact them and figure it out but i also want to make sure i get paid first and i said hey look how about we do this you just don't pay me the money that i asked for to do the video collaboration on and i'll just keep both bikes so then i can sell it and make my money back it's a little bit of a pain selling bikes don't get me wrong like it's cool money when it comes in but man it literally does suck you guys don't understand like trying to find someone local in my area when it's not like la or somewhere where like people actually ride bikes it's really difficult so i'm not a big fan of selling bikes especially you know trying to give out like my information or my number i try to do it through like uh, craigslist or uh, marketplace on facebook or sometimes i'll let you guys know as well but the, anyways that's uh <laughs> that's like what's happening with that right you know let's go down let's go down a little bit i got some more to talk about um the next thing on the list um the apex the rumble motors apex dual motor dual battery that is coming um i just paid for shipment and yes i i had to pay for shipping yeah i i don't get it i really don't get it either um that's kind of a huge negative to me that's probably something i'm going to mention in my video review as well when i bought the bike i could be wrong i don't remember them mentioning that you have to pay for shipping and if you do i apologize that's on me i'm not too mad because they paid for half of my shipping and i don't know if they do that for everybody but just a heads up you have to pay for shipping and the shipping was like 300 dollars i uh, my i was 325 to be correct so i paid 165 or 167 just keep that in mind if you want to buy the rumble motors uh, apex bike but the good thing is it's coming right so you guys can check that bike out and we're gonna see how it is the other cool thing about the company i gotta give them like props for and it is because i am an influencer i get it you get a little bit of perks when you're a youtuber but they uh i told them i said hey i want to pay for the carbon fiber uh panel piece because it looks so much better than the stock panels trust me it looks so much better and they said oh no problem um rj said he's gonna give it to you for free i'm like dude like thank you guys you guys are actually like legit hooking me up now it's not gonna change my video review i'm sorry it might change how i feel about how the bike looks cosmetically because i feel like it looks so much better now but i don't know like <laughs> we'll see how it is i'm still gonna like do my video review like how i want to do it but so anyways i got that bike coming dang that car hella ran that uh red and then let's see what else do we have coming um I'm trying to think i'm trying to think i know uh rave is trying to come out with their gtx model it's supposed to be bigger it's supposed to be faster um one of the guys that actually is like behind all the work he's super cool with me we talk about a bunch of stuff and he's literally listening to everything i have to say about how the bike should be built so i'm expecting good things about it like obviously i'm not doing the you know the frame or anything like that like i'm just basically saying like hey like you're gonna probably want this on the bike you're gonna want more top speed you're gonna want this you want that and they've been listening so we'll see how that bike is they're definitely gonna send it to me but it's not gonna be anytime soon also the mac fox that i just reviewed the x1 they said in june sometime so expect it to be like late june or maybe uh july early july if they're on time by the time i can review it oh god okay my light went off oh god oh god <laughs> oh man that is scary i was like why is my light not working there we go uh, there we go so uh expect the x2 to come from them that one's gonna have full suspension and go like 28 miles an hour that's gonna be a pretty badass bike i think um man i feel like there was some other stuff that was coming as well i get a lot of offers for a bunch of stuff like gaming chairs like hey can you review this gaming chair but hey can you review this blood pressure monitor like what what the hell <laughs> um some of the other stuff is some cool helmets um there was also a company that was going to send me some led pedals and it's not the the red shift pedals it's the it's a different one like arcs and that's not arc light um oh my god it starts with an e i can't remember the name but they hit me up but they wanted a full video review i was like i'm not doing a full video review i'll put it in my video for like one or two minutes before i ride and i'll put them on my bike and i'll leave them on there but uh that's long gone they hit me up uh i think once i was actually done with the zoo 72 kit so i just went and bought the redshift ones i was like ah, screw it like sometimes it's actually better to buy your bikes or your parts instead of having a company tell you hey you need to do this you need to do that which here's another thing this is the big news right here big news i saved it for the end because i really wanted you guys to uh hear this right towards the end of the video before uh i say saranara to you guys did i say that right 
And that is the fact that I bought the new Tellaria XXX. I just bought it this morning, yes. So the day that this video is being recorded right now is the day that they first put them up on there. So you're gonna know it's probably been a week since they uh, released them on, on Lunacycle. But I bought one. Now that bike is crazy, right? Absolutely crazy. I'm so happy to like have that bike on the channel. Also the fact that I bought it just makes it so much better because I can do whatever I want with it. Um, it's not like I don't, but I like the fact that I can kind of make my video the way I want to do it. Like I don't have to really go over too much specs if I don't want to. I can just start riding the thing if I really want to. I don't really need to be precise or accurate. I just get on and have fun. So I'm thinking we're going to keep that bike for probably two months, maybe some around there and then I'll sell it. The bike is $3,000. It's a 40 amp hour battery, 60 volt. Um, it is, I believe, 90 amps, if I'm not mistaken. I believe it's 90 amps. And then the Sting R is 120 amps. So uh, it's gonna be fantastic, I think. The only bad thing about the bike is how the battery comes out. And I get it, it's not the best. I'm not saying it's the best, but realistically, on how long I've been riding bikes, I don't ever take my batteries out for any reason. Now, maybe these I do, but the only time I actually take out batteries like to my Suron or my Onyx, I've never actually taken my Suron or my Onyx battery out since I put the 55 amp hour in there. Seriously, once I put that battery in there, I have not uh, taken it out whatsoever because it's so, such a tight fit. Um, the only time I actually do that on my Suron to take it out is if I put it on my bike rack because the bike is so heavy already with the battery. So that makes it a little bit lighter. But I never take my Suron battery out for any reason. There's no reason for me to do it. But it might be different for you guys because I can understand why are you gonna go now? You sat there forever and then you wanna go. I can understand you guys saying, hey, I live like upstairs and carrying the bike with the battery. Like I totally get it. So, um, you know, like to each own, I'm gonna obviously talk about it. You know, that's gonna be something I mentioned, but I'm just excited for that. So that's gonna come hopefully soon. And we got a busy schedule, guys. We got a lot going on. I'm gonna try to do my best stick around watch the video subscribe please just, just smash a like on this video i should have said that in the beginning but it really helps the algorithm it also helps people find the channel it also helps me get more money to buy more things or modify these bikes because this is not cheap it's definitely not cheap to do this but i'll see you guys in the next one you guys are the true mvps and really thank you for uh, sticking around until the end and let me know if you guys have done any of uh any builds on this thing and if you guys have, if you've done mods, like the dual battery setup, stuff you guys have done from my videos, tag me on Instagram at Mr. Central Driver, and I will repost it on my story. So make sure to do that if you've done any of the mods that I've shown you guys. Like I said, 72 volt, or maybe you're in the process of doing it. I'll post up your process as well. Or if you did the dual battery setup because you found it from me and whatnot. And it was helpful for you guys watching that video. All right, it's been a long day. I can't talk anymore. Later.